that whatever you put your hand to and assign the Lord's name to it, that it be kingdom class and not world class. Let it be something that draws the people to you because of the name of God that you put on it. Don't be the one that causes people to say, I don't want to work with the kingdom. Because even as an entrepreneur, I feel, I feel it so heavily that the year of the entrepreneur is upon us because we're getting into the Shemitah year. We'll talk about that at another time. But as God gives you the ideas, let it be kingdom class. The kingdom class. So here's the last point of John 10 and 10 about how he will give you life and life more abundantly. So here's the second question. He can't give you more abundantly if you're not even expecting some abundance. Wow. If you don't, if he's gonna give you abundant expectation, you can't start off with a zero with no expectation. Because wow. zero times zero equals zero. But if you start with a little something, because the scripture says if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, which is just a little bit of something, God can work with that. So I ask you, what are you bringing today? For him to use and put in abundance. So two questions. Because we're life changing. Christian Center. What life are you going to choose to live? And when you choose that life, I pray it to be in the life of abundance. But if that is your choice, consider what you're bringing for him to make abundant in you. Amen? Amen. Come on, put those hands together, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can do a whole lot better than that. Put those hands upon you. Yeah, amen. Come on, come on. Give God a celebration praise right here. Give God a celebration praise right here. You made it. We made it. We're here. <laughs> Come on and shout it to the Lord with the voice of triumph. He tried to steal my joy, but he couldn't. Tried to kill me, but he couldn't. Tried to make me lose my mind, but he couldn't. But God. But God. But God. What the? What the? What the? What the? The rest of the story. What the? There's another chapter, and it's called What the? What the? What the? What the? See, here's the reality. Here's the reality. Is that what you have come through in 2020? Not just a year alone, but even the personal battles that you had to fight that no one knows about. The mental battles that you had to deal with that no one knows about. The tears that you had to cry in your room, in your job, in your cubicle by yourself that no one knows about. When you had to answer the phone like everything was okay, but your heart was broken, your mind was shaken, your soul was stirred up, you were in a place of frustration. See, those are the battles that I shout about. Those are the things that I praise God about. Forget about the pandemic. Forget about COVID-19. There were some personal battles, some mental battles, some mental struggles that you but God. But God. But God. But God. But God. Here's what I love. We are not able to congregate like we used to. But God. I think years ago they created something called technology. But I believe that God created technology years ago because He knew it would be right here. But God, 
See, you don't know why God is creating something in your life now. Because what he's bringing to you now will be beneficial to you later. It may not make sense now. It may not feel good now. But it's going to make sense later. <laughs> One thing I love about God is sometimes he don't make sense, but he does make change. <laughs> Some things he does doesn't make sense, but it does make change. And I would rather have the change than to understand what he's doing. But God. My God, right here, before we get into this world, I want to bring up this amazing young man. He's a blessing to us. Uh, he went with me a few days ago, came up here, spent some time at the church, and he and I uh, went out shopping, some Christmas shopping last minute. Man, husband shopping. We don't do good the shopping beforehand. All right. uh, <laughs> Uh, but he went out with me, and one of the people said, this, How old is your son? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, I was that joke like it might be why I look that old. <laughs> Amen. But I praise God because he is a, 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 we even call him a Godson to us, man. He is such a blessing. Uh, great minister, uh, one of not just for long the time, but we're going to allow, well, we don't say minister, but Brother Terrence to come <laughs> forth and mind and bless us in mind ministry as he comes. Come on, bless the Lord as he comes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
to speak. You gotta be prepared to move. Amen. One thing that I want to decree and to declare about this year is that we no longer shout over stuff that we do not apply. Amen. Amen. I think 2020 has wounded a lot of believers. It's challenged a lot of Christians, mainly because we come to church with the mindset to only shout, but not to apply. Jesus. And if there's anything 2020 has taught me and has shown me is the importance of application. Exactly. Amen. Because I don't want to have services no more to where we are emotionally charged but not spiritually moved. Amen. And churches and people and places have become so emotional and so what happens is our soul is moved, but our spirit man is still hungry. Wow. Because your spirit is not moved off of shouting. Your faith is not moved off of shouting. It does not grow off of shouting. It grows off of application. Yeah. And I believe that 2021 and the rest of this decade and the rest of our lives until the day that we see our Lord and Savior, our God creator in heaven. I believe that we shall walk in victory. But the year of making declarations and decrees, because watch this, you cannot make a decree that applies to you if you don't apply it. The kingdom is not applied to you if you are not applied to it. Amen. Amen. Because I'm tired of seeing our believers. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be times you're going to be weary. I'm not saying there's not going to be days you're not going to be shaken. I'm not saying there's not going to be days you have more tears in your eyes than praise in your mouth. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is the time of you falling into the state of sin of unbelief is over. Amen. 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 Because I believe, I believe that everything that was decreed in 2020 still happened to those who didn't lose their faith. Yeah, Amen. Amen. I believe that everything that was decreed by faith at the beginning of 2020 still happened to those that did not lose their faith. Yeah. Because watch this, a sunny day does not mean a day of sunshine. A sunny day is a day that's filled with the sun that's shining in you. Even in a rainy day. Because watch this, we have, we have thrown away 2020 because of a condition. Do not forget that we're in this world but we're not of it. So COVID-19 is subject to the world because the world is in a fallen state of sin. So the sickness does not move me. But watch this. My faith, my faith moves the sickness. That's why to those who may have lost, they did not lose their life due to COVID. They just finished the race. Amen. There's no losers in the kingdom. Nothing but winners. That's why I love this not hours. I saw it. 2021. But when you look at 21, it's two and the letter one. I mean the word one. So watch this. 2021. Which means I've already won in 2021. Already won. And y'all know me. I don't, I don't do a lot of the rhyming and all that kind of stuff. But I like that. Because one this, my faith will not allow me to lose. My faith will not allow me to be shaken. My faith will not allow me to be moved by what I see, only by what I believe. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? What has God 
spoken over you that has caused you to shake a little bit in your faith. Yes. And you got to ask yourself, but can I believe this? Can I believe this? Amen. Wow. Can I believe that 2021 is going to be my year? Because watch this. Can I help you understand something? COVID is still here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Everybody wait. I can't wait to 2021. Guess what came over in 2021? COVID-19. It crossed over too. It crossed over too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you win a new year with 2020 bouts. But let me also tell you what else crossed over. God is still here. God crossed over with you. If you let him, if you allow him to cross over with you, he crossed over with you too. That's right. That's right. Because what most folks believe, and, I, and I, I hate to bust the bubble, but I want to bust your religious bubble, is that many people thought 2021 was going to bring some magical newness, and the sky was going to open up, and the rainbow of peace and joy, and COVID-19 will be mysteriously gone, and we will be able to come back to church like we used to, and do all this stuff like we used to. But let me help you understand something. It's still here. Some of y'all still at home. Amen. Still can't congregate. But guess what? A, a full church does not dictate me giving God a full praise. Can I say it again? A full church does not dictate me giving God a full praise. See, watch this. And if when you to preach to a cell phone, <laughs> and ain't nobody else out there with you, a half church does not dictate. And guess what? You didn't short change the person you were preaching to. Can I tell you the reason why most of us are shaking? Because you don't know how to praise God by yourself. Some of us be fire starters. You get excited because your neighbor got excited. You start shouting because your neighbor shouting. But can you praise God when ain't no neighbor around? Amen. Can you praise God when your favorite song ain't playing? Amen. That's why this year I do not want to push you or 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 I don't. I'm not going to stir up your soul. I'm going to show no shake up your spirit, man. Amen? Yeah, that's good. I'm not here. and We're not here, man. This is a year of application. The decade, the time of application. Keep playing for yourself. Come on, I guess. It's a year of application. Say it's my time, my time. to apply. Ain't it funny that every year we put God to work, but not us? Amen. Amen. Every year, God, this is your year to bless me. <laughs> my year of crossover. My year of favor. My year of victory. But see, can I have to say something? God already did the work. Amen. On the cross, Christ said, it is finished. What's finished? The work. But there's only one work you've got to do. And that's the belief. All our resolutions. Some of y'all know when they got that application and all that kind of stuff to the gym. Bless your heart. Y'all have made these resolutions a better you and a better this and a better that. But the things you should be working on are the things you're not working on. Amen. And it's funny, everybody want to work on everything else but your faith. This is going to be my year of a closer walk with God. It's going to be a hard walk if you ain't got no faith. It's going to be a tough walk if you ain't got no faith. We got to be real, man. I want you to shout victory. Notice the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But if you don't know you redeemed, you can't say so. There are many people who are saying they're redeemed and don't even believe it. Amen. 
See, I, 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 li I like I like this because you got to be socially distanced and everything. And you know how you always say, say to your neighbor, talk to your neighbor, give your neighbor a high five or something to your neighbor. You know, but you can't do that right now. You know, I believe you can't do that right now because maybe you quit talking to your neighbor and start talking to yourself. Amen. High five yourself and say, self, the year of being pitiful, the year of being doubtful is over. Amen. Now watch this, you can't shout about it. We always shout when we shout when we say the other folk. Well, shout when you say it to yourself. Praise God when you say it to yourself. I'm going to apply this thing this year. I'm going to go back and find every revelation and every word I got back in the day. And I'm going to work that back. Amen. I believe 2021 is going to be a year of the year of manifestation of old revelation. I believe 2021 is going to be the year of manifestation of old revelation. Stuff you didn't work. There's a word that you left in 2020 that you ain't work. And guess what? It's still good in 2021. Amen. There's no expiration date on the word. Amen. Batteries will lose their life. Everything, there's expiration dates on everything but the word. That's the word. The same word, your great, 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 great grandma and granddaddy work still work today. No expiration date on it. It is going to work. 20, just because 22 years old, that same word that brought you through 2020, it still work today. You looking for a new thing, and you work the old. Okay. Hey, Amen. Praise God. I'm tired of seeing folks shouting and still walking out defeated. All we see is defeated shouts. You shouting your weave out, shouting the penny out your loafers, shouting the towel off your neck, makeup all messed up, and you still walk out here defeated. We've been conditioned to do that. We have been conditioned for church, but not kingdom. Church folks shout over the word, kingdom people apply the word. Amen. Tell my father, what you shout know? The word I apply. What you shout know? The word I heard. And that's all we do. We shout over what we hear. But today you're going to learn it takes more than hearing. Because see, the problem is in America, the Western culture, when we hear the word here, all we think of is through what? Listen. Yeah. No. That is not. See, the problem is we have we have religiousized, westernized, Americanized the Bible. That's right. That's right. This word did not come from America. This word did not come from a Western culture. That's why it's important that when you study the Bible, there are three things you need to know. And some of my college students know this, the land, the, land. the language, and the culture the of the Bible, right. not of where you're at. Right. Amen. Right. Because the word of God does not shift when it goes into a different culture. The, watch this. The culture should not shift the word. The word should shift the culture. Your situation should not shift the word. The word should shift your situation. But watch this. The reason why we manipulate the word is because you don't have enough faith that it can work the way it is. Wow. Amen. We got to add something to it. Cursed is the man that adds and take away. Amen. The only thing that should be added to, your, to that word, because you watch this, the reason why the word can't work, because the word is idle if it has no faith to make it move. The only thing that your word, the Bible requires from you, watch this, is not your beautiful looks. Y'all look good. Amen. Not your runs. Not your plan, not your uh, hey, all right, not your hooping, not your shout, not your dancing. That will not make the word work. 
The only thing that the word requires to work in your life is faith. Amen. Praise God. See, you're trying to add stuff to the word that ain't making the word work. Amen. Just because you read don't make the word work. Bitch, run a red two hours. You just read two hours, but are you gonna work? Because you can't work what you read without faith. That's why the only place the devil is fighting all of us is our faith. Amen. And see, the reason why we, we're, we're struggling is because we're not real in our faith. What do I mean by that? Tell God, listen, God, you know what 2020 did show me? God, I'm gonna be real. I really don't believe you as much as I shout about. Amen. I really, you know, I really did not. I thought until 2020, all the way up from 2019 and beyond, before, in the past, I shouted about it, prayed about it, cried about it. Spotted back, sowed a seed on it. But didn't believe it. Amen. Some of y'all mad, 2020. Because the, the, the man of God, the woman of God said, 2020 going to be your year. 2020 and pan out because you watch this. It was and still is your year. But the problem is you didn't believe it. You think that the prophecy that was spoken to you, because even the prophetic word needs your faith to work. I can call you up here because you watch this. We are conditioned to come. I need a word. I need a word. But watch this. That word ain't going to work if your faith ain't going to work. So a prophet can prophesy to you a thousand times. But as soon as and you'll cry, you'll shout, you'll walk out of here and see, watch this. We will walk out of here expecting God to move on that word, not realizing God is expecting that word to move on you. Say, I'm going to shout. About what I know. Watch this. I'm jumping ahead of myself. We're going to pour in the Holy Ghost real quickly. Go to Jeremiah. We're going to finish up what we talked about last week. But I'm going to show you something. Go to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. I told you we're going to work in Bible this year. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I ain't going to spoil you like I used to. Boy, I got on to the boy. You're spoiling me. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. Come on, read that for me. Watch this. Read that for me when you get it. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. For let him be glorified, glory, glory in this. Watch this, watch this. If you're going to shout about anything, this is what I want you to shout about. If you're going to glorify in anything, glorify in this. What is it? That he understands and knows me. Stop right there. <laughs> We don't shout about that. Now, if I had to say, right now, Lord, I'm going to release a blessing. Ah! <laughs> right now, Lord, I got a house for you. Ah! Your boo around the corner. You good. <laughs> but watch this. What applies to your spirit don't move you. Because we are conditioned to respond to the soul, but not what feeds our spirit. Wow. So what God just said right there. If you're going to shout about anything, this is what I want you to shout about. That you understand and you know me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God. Woo! And all you're getting. Yeah. So I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout not because I got a car, not because I got a house, but I'm going to praise God because even when the doctor's report that comes in is contrary to what I believe, I got an understanding in a God that is able to do the impossible. I shout over the understanding. And watch it. Not only do I understand him, I know him. That's why the church are old. They ain't got nowhere near the amount of Bibles and books and testimonies and scriptures and all that kind of stuff that we have today. There ain't one thing in this Bible that somebody had written about. Warfare, there's a Bible. Spiritual warfare, there's a book on it. How to sow a seed, there's a book. I'm going to tell you what the biggest problem is. We got books on 10 steps to a better you. The problem is, you is what keep you in the mess you in now. I don't 
need a better me. I need to die to me. And resurrect in him. Because watch this. With your fake ideology, you think. Because notice what John said. Let me decrease. That he may increase. So the less I understand about me. And the more I understand about him. The stronger I will be in this earth. I don't need to understand that better me. I didn't live with me. I know me. I'm jacked up. I'm messed up. Me? Ten steps to a better me in all. Because see, watch this. Can I show you something? You have more faith in your work than you do in God working in you. Wow. Wow. Because what happens when you take that second step and it don't work? You lose your faith. But here's the problem. You never put your faith in God. You put your faith in the work. So that's why we've been shouting over the work. Watch this. I, I, here it is. Now, I'm not going to say all of them. There are some things that are true. But here it is. If you do this, this is going to happen. If you sow this, this is going to happen. But here's what most people forget to put on that. Because true prophets, if you make declarations like that, it's important to state if you do this by faith. Because if you come up here and sow a $50 seed, and in 50 days, just no, it ain't going to happen if you ain't got no faith. Amen. Say, I got to have faith. Gotta have faith. I think they made a song about it back in the day. Gotta have faith. And we sang about it, so all that kind of stuff. But here's the problem. What you, and, it was even, and this was a secular song, I think. What was that man's name? George Michael. Was it going to be happening? <laughs> what? Well, it was a secular song. But notice what he said. He didn't say, you may have faith. He said, you got to have faith. Hey, honey, that both that ain't be in the church know that you need faith for the kingdom to work. And church folk come to church and shout over stuff and you ain't got no faith. Say, Lord, Lord help my unbelief. See, that's a weight. You fixing to let go of that weighty ideology that's making you think I gotta have this, this, and this, and this. See, that's why y'all so messed around. That's why most of y'all are living in condemnation because you have faith in the work rather than the faith in the finished work of Christ. Because see, watch this. He died for all of your sins, right? But let me help you with something. You cannot receive the forgiveness of the cross because this is what we, this is what we shout about because we'll hear that. But let me help you want to understand what happened in the Jewish culture. And when they sacrifice, watch this. If I sacrifice to my wife, if I do, if my wife has a sin and I kill whatever is required to kill, watch this. Just because I kill it does not mean she's forgiven. Now watch this. The forgiveness is there. But she has to receive the sacrifice that I've given. But can I tell you what most of us do? We shout over the sacrifice without receiving the gift of the sacrifice. Wow. You are thankful that Jesus died, but have you received it? Wow. That's why it says if you believe in your heart, that's the reception of it. But what the devil has caused many of us in the church to miss it is we shout it over the act of the cross without receiving the cross. That's why God said in Jeremiah, if you want to glorify, glorify this. That you know me. And not only know me, you understand me. Why is it important to understand God? Because when you understand how God works, you'll quit blaming him for life happenings. When I know that God knows the plans for me, not to harm me, when I understand how he works, then I will not say, God, why are you doing this to me? Yeah. 
See, you ask a question like that when you don't understand the God you serve. Wow. That's right. That's right. Wow. That's right. Amen. That's why 2020 was the worst year. And I ain't gonna lie, boy. I don't want to. I'm gonna be real. I don't want to see 2020 again. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna tell you no story. But here's the reality: we don't know what 2021 holds. All right. All right. We don't know. But here's the reality. I don't know what 2021 holds, but I do know who holds 2021. That's, that's, that's all that matters. So watch this. Man, boy, I ain't gonna get to this. See, see, watch this. We already did this. If y'all want to get this, go back to last week because I know y'all talk too much. But we learned all that kind of stuff, and then the author here says, stripping off every unnecessary weight. Say, rip off, rip off. the unnecessary weight. Yeah. What is unnecessary weight? Unnecessary weight is anything that causes your faith not to grow. Anything. Anything or any person. Make it clear. Make it clear. Amen. Anything or any person, any habit, any mindset that does not allow your faith to grow is a weight. Amen. Amen. See, we've been to cast off people that's actually helping your growth. You, you've been to I gotta get rid of them. No, leave them alone. Because they really, they stretching you. You just don't like to stretch. Leave them alone. Amen. See, the folks that's keeping you stuck, let them go. But, but, but they understand me. The other person understand you too. But they also understand your future a lot better than you do. Wow. Amen. So I got to keep going. Got to keep going. Got to talk too much. And the sin. Say the sin. What did we learn the sin was last week? Because the author here didn't say sin. Because again, when we read the scripture, we'll start thinking about fornication and lying and all that. We'll start thinking about all this sin. No, no. He said the sin. Because let me have understand something. There are some sins that you deal with. And this isn't a green card for you to sin. Because shall we continue in sin? Notice what he says. Shall we continue in sin? Mm -hmm. You may sin. But see, watch this. In Christ, you're not sinless. You just sin less. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. But now the problem is not the sinless lifestyle. It's a continuation in sin. Yeah. Right. That's the problem. Yeah. Can't go there. But the sin, though, there's a sin that you can have that will jack your life up. And that's unbelief. Unbelief is a sin. Watch it. Can I show you? Let me show you how churched up we are. Because the problem is, when you think about sin, you think about, watch it, what your struggle is. If you got a fornication problem, you got a lying problem, you got a whatever problem, we can work with that. But see, watch this. Notice this. Everybody works on that sin rather than the sin. Because if I can strengthen your sin, I mean your faith in God, I can weaken your, but watch this, the sin, because most of us have faith, more faith in the sin act than we do have faith in God the deliverer of the sin. Wow. Because see, watch it, most of us wake up, I ain't gonna cuss today, 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 and can I tell you something? The more what you, the more you say what you ain't gonna do, right. you're tempting yourself to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't funny. You don't wake up saying, "I'm gonna read more today, I'm gonna read more today, I'm gonna read more today, I'm gonna read more today." We don't do that. We don't focus on the betterment of our spirit. We say, "I ain't gonna." And then watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You'll go through the whole day and not cuss. The whole day, and you feel so good. Oh God, thank you. You working on? Me. Watch this. You went through the whole day and didn't cuss, but you didn't read. Yeah. You didn't pray. You didn't acknowledge that. You didn't talk to God not one time. Because watch this, your faith is in the act. Oh, wow. It's in the act. So you're happy on what you didn't do to your soul and to your flesh rather than growth in your spirit. Yeah. Amen. Wow. That's why you gotta say, that's what the Father said to Jesus when he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Be real for where you're at. Amen. God, I got faith in this, but you know what, God? I really don't have it. I don't think I'm not, I'm not as strong in my faith as I thought I was in this area. Amen. Be real about that. Because see, here's the reality. 
I'm going to show you the thing. What you going to do? I'm going to keep going. But say a good leader always shifts your focus. Amen. A good leader always shifts your focus. Because, see, the problem is with all 2020 and below and all the years before, everything was about you. But watch this. If you want things to be about you, you got to make things about him. Amen. Because the moment you make it about him is when he makes it about you. Amen. But when it's all about you, because he watched this, you're only satisfied with him on what he does for you. Wow. But when you develop an understanding and knowing him, then guess what happens? When I begin to serve him, I don't serve him because of what he can do for me. That's church ideology. Kingdom ideology is I serve him because I love him. See, church folk usually get you saved off of the fear of going to hell. Amen. If you don't get saved, you're going to bust hell wide open. Everybody up here at the altar getting saved. Watch this. And you're getting saved because you don't want to go to hell. But the growth in your love for Christ. So watch this. Your salvation is always going to be, I don't want to go to hell. Versus your love for God. So you're living in a state of fear, and that's witchcraft. Because we should never, notice what Jesus said. He said, if I be lifted up, I shall draw. Notice he did not use the place of manipulation. That's a Jezebel spirit. Jezebel manipulation. Okay. Amen. Okay. But a good leader shifts your focus. <laughs> a good leader shifts your focus. That's why the author here says, looking away. From all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus. Notice what he said, focusing, 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 in. In means continuation. Because can I have you understand something? If you ever have a camera, in which we all do with our phones, watch this. You can put your camera in front of you. But if your face moves, the camera has that face recognition. And what happens when you shift your face, your, your camera now has to readjust its focus on you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what does it mean about focusing on Christ? Because watch this, you can focus on him in one place today, and he may shift to another place tomorrow, and that's going to require you to readjust your focus. That's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because I can see him clear today. Yeah. And I might not be able to see him clear tomorrow, so i got to readjust my focus. Yeah. But guess what? I don't take my eyes off him. Yeah. Peter, amen. He didn't start to see until he took his eyes off. And can I tell you what most of us, most of us don't see until we take our eyes off. Yeah. Amen. Say, Lord. Lord. No, 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 thank you, Lord. Thank you. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Help, me help me to keep my focus. It's also going to be a gift. Yes, one thing the Holy Spirit from the Lord remember me last night. He said, I need you to start teaching my people how to activate through the Holy Spirit. God didn't give the Holy Ghost to talk in tongues. No, them tongues supposed to change you. Amen. We got a Holy Ghost. And he called, you know what he called the Holy Ghost? Can I tell you all the secrets? Don't tell nobody. He called the Holy Ghost the helper. <laughs> And can I tell you what we need, Sonny? We need some help. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't call the Holy Spirit to save you because Christ was to save you. Right. Amen. Right. It's not his job to save you. You are the same. But it's your job. It's his job to help you. Help you. Amen. Amen. Because we show the devil that sometimes in your life, you will need some help. And the reason why you can't overcome that sin is because, watch this, you're rejecting your helper. Help me, Lord. See, watch it. We make that statement, but we don't have faith in that statement. We just say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You just saying that. You, don't, you ain't asking that. You don't believe that. Amen. Because when the help do come, and the help say, leave them. Well, Lord. Uh, help me, Lord. Leave her. Lord, well, you know. man. Because you watch it. Whenever the help is contradictory to what your flesh wants. That's when you realize who's really, who are you really following. You can tell who you're really following when you don't want to follow the thing that's telling you the right thing. Leave her alone. Watch this. 
If you don't want to follow the Holy Spirit, you'll always make an excuse and say, stuck in your seat. Stay focused. Yes, Lord. We're going to get started this year. Watch this. Who is the author and the perfecter of your what? Who is the author and perfecter of your faith? Jesus, not you. You trying to perfect your faith with all that reading. And watch this. What you read, you don't have faith in because you ain't allowing him to perfect it. And that word perfecting means mature. Amen. See, watch this. In America, perfect means without sin, being blameless, being free from this and the other. In the scripture, perfection means mature. So watch this. Your religious self will say, ain't no perfect Christian. Yes, it is. Amen. Just bust your religion, folks. We can't be perfect because watch this. The reason why you say you can't be perfect because you refuse to mature in Christ. Yeah. Amen. There is perfection, but it's not perfect. Here's the problem. You're trying to be perfect according to your standards. Your definition of perfection. But if I ask you what is his definition, you don't know. Amen. What, what's perfect? What does perfect mean? Then all of a sudden you'll read off Webster, you'll read off what Webster says, you'll read off what everything else says, you'll become Google Logians, you'll Google it. <laughs> but you never go to what the scripture says about maturity. And see, watch this. When you learn that you can be perfect, mature, it takes the weight off of you. See, most of us, re the reason why living for uh, Christianity is so hard is because you're living up to a standard that God never created. Which leads me to go past this. We, we move ahead and say, we'll go through all this. Which leads me to this, focusing on Jesus. Say, I gotta focus on him. I gotta focus on Watch him. this. Why is it important? Because notice what Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Say, hope me, Lord. Hope there Lord. you go. <laughs> How is he gonna help you? He says, come to me. Stop right there. He did not say, go to your prayer party. Right. He did not say go to your bishop, go to your man or woman of God, which is good and it's fine, but here's the problem. A good leader, again, never causes you to become dependent upon them. They should make you become independent upon them while becoming dependent upon God. We all need good shepherds. I need some good leaders. I call my man of God quite often. Since the come down in this chest, woo, he has. Hey, help me. Help me. You know? But here's reality, though. But I'm not so dependent upon him that I lost my independency upon God. Amen. So, so I should say, come to me. So, so I should say, self, go to Jesus. Yes, man. My neighbors just like, well, give me that microphone. You don't have my mic. No, it's here with my Help me. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all gotta get a clear word, I hear you. All right. <laughs> Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened. Now here's the reality. When we that is better, thank you. When we read that scripture, <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I'm lying. Y'all gonna help me, you know, okay? <laughs> uh, but all who are weary and heavily burdened. Now watch this. When we read this scripture, here's the problem with most of us. We always think about problems of the world. But can I tell you what makes your problems of the world even worse is that when you're trying to live up to a standard of church standard. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Because watch this, he ain't telling you to take off the burdens of the world. He's telling you to take off the burdens of the religious stuff that you put upon yourself. Watch this, come unto me all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. Because what was happening to the people in this time, because Jesus said, I did not come to do away with the law, but I come to refresh it. What does that mean? I can't even take away the stuff y'all added to it that don't mean nothing. Let me, let me give you a real quick thing. They, the, uh, uh, the Bible said, thou shalt not um, gaze upon your, your neighbor's uh, wife or something like that. That's one of the commandments. So what the Pharisees and the Sadducees did, they created what was called fences. And they said, well, you know what? Because I can't control my flesh, I'm going to just close my eyes. Because I don't want to be tempted. Now, guess what? You shut your eyes. You're not really blind. That's why Jesus said you can't let the blind 
Be the blind. The reason why is because what you're doing is you're trying to tell, you're trying to lead somebody in something that you can control yourself in. So what they say, and they almost will say, thou shalt not steal. So what the Pharisees and the Sadducees will say, if you ain't got no money, then you can't go and shop. You can't go to the stores. That's going to tip you to steal. No, it's not. I got control of my flesh. You don't. And so what happened is they were putting all this stuff. And let me tell you what happened. The more laws they put on top of the law, the more the law became irrelevant. And so what happened is people start losing focus on the word and start focusing on traditions that don't bring no peace. And so you can walk around here with your eyes closed. Don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. It ain't bringing you no peace. You come up here and do all this religious stuff, don't bring you no peace. But here's the deal. If you come to Jesus, the old folks used to say, come to Jesus. Right now. Right now. Oh, we don't hear, oh, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Right now. <laughs> Amen. Not, not now, but right now. You know why? Because you need him right now. But here's the amazing thing about that. You can call me. I may not ever answer the phone. That's right. You can call everybody else. And it's not that we don't love you. You just busy. You got life. You got life. Yeah. And I tell you who's not busy for you. Yeah. Come on now. But here's the problem. Because you haven't developed a relationship. That's my job. Hopefully. Is to help you develop a relationship with him. You can begin to hear his voice more clearly. So that you can go to him just like you come to me. Watch this. And I will give you rest. What does the word rest mean? Oh, Lord, I need more sleep. I need some sleep, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh, I need some more sleep. That ain't what that word rest means. Amen. Praise God. See, that's the problem. You can't read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. That word rest there means to let go of unnecessary things. I will teach you what you need to hold on to, and I'm also teach you who and what you need to let go of. Amen. Amen. Say, Lord, Lord, give me some rest. Give me some rest. Amen. 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 Teach me how to let go of stuff that ain't bringing me peace. If it don't bring me peace, if they don't bring me peace, they can go with me. Amen. Can I tell you why most of your peace is gone? You're struggling with your joy. It's because you're letting you're letting you're letting and you're following peace killers that are alive in your life. Amen. There are habits that's killing your peace. You used to be happy when you ministered. What happened? What happened? You used to enjoy life. What happened? Who or what is killing your peace? Because can I tell you something? Things that's killing your peace ain't always bringing you, making you angry or frustrated. Uh -oh. Because there are some things that's killing your peace that's also bringing your flesh joy. Because see, we always think peace killers are negative people. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. There are some cool people out there. Cool joy. <laughs> I mean, man, they just, they cool on the other side of the pillow. Y'all go back like four flats on the Cadillac, man. And y'all, they got it, everything is just copacetic. But they're killing your peace. How are they killing your peace? Because they're not allowing you to grow. Come unto me, and I'll show you who they are. Amen. And can I tell you something? The reason, we don't, the reason we don't want to go to Jesus, same reason why you didn't want to take that boyfriend or girlfriend to meet your folks. Because you knew you knew what they were going to say when you brought them up in there. So why should you just going to say, we're we going to make it work anyhow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Well, Bishop, I ain't want to bring them around you because you know how you are. Right. Come on. Come on. How am I? Amen. <laughs> Only people that holler is the guilty dog. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. 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 Well, well, so, 
so so in other words, you get mad at me because I want more for you. You get frustrated with me because I want better for you. Amen. It's not that I don't believe in them. I don't have faith in them. I just see your destiny. Take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn from me. Praise God. We want to get we want to get teaching and everything from everyone else but Christ. This ain't no shout message. This is a hopeful message. Amen. See, these are scriptures that we quoted. Stuff you know. See, watch it. Let's see how church folk will say. You'll say stuff like this. I already know that. But here's the problem. I'm not trying to get you to know it. I'm trying to get you to apply it. Because I don't care what you know. The devil knows scripture, but he can't live it. Amen. Amen. Give me some deep. No. Oh, watch it. Follow me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed quiet for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So watch this. Living for Christ has a burden, but it's light. The reason why your burden is so heavy is because you added stuff to it. Do a self-check of what you placed upon yourself to live to a standard that God never told you to live by. Wow. Wow. Go real quick to Mark 7. Mark chapter 7. There's one on my mind. I praise God for this because, man, I'm still in a different ship. Because I struggled. Pastor Turner, I struggled. I came up here last night and I sat on my face and prayed and prayed and prayed. Because I knew I had to finish this message. And I prayed and prayed. My wife would tell you, even this morning, I was just, I'm just like, Lord, what, what are you going to do? You know? But I felt something. I was wrestling with my spirit. But as I was praying last night, the Lord began to show me, you, you, you not only just us, there are many other believers, many other churches, I know it. Uh, that God is raising up some true disciples in this season. Amen. You're going to be blessed. You're going you know, you to get the car and all that stuff. Just that's what you want. But I really see some people who are hungry for the revelation of God. Amen. Amen. I, I, I really believe that we're entering into a place that people want a revival. Watch this, not a revival of your spirit, I mean of your soul and your shout, and I know a revival that draws me closer yeah. to him. The old song says, draw me close to you, never let me go. Ain't no old song, that's a new song, but we ain't going to sing. <laughs> Mark 7, someone read verse 1 for me. Let me go, let me go there myself. Mark 7, Mark chapter 7. Mm-hmm. And there has been that some of his disciples ate their bread with ceremonially, ceremonially, mm-hmm. impure hands that is unwashed and defiled according to Jewish religious ritual. Mm-hmm. For the Pharisees and all of the Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands, holding firmly to the traditions of the elders. Stop right there, holding firm to the traditions of who? The elders. Not God. In other words, they don't eat until they do this ritual that God never required them to do. So they're holding to a tradition that brings no peace, no growth. You have growth in the religion, but no growth in the relationship. Keep reading. Uh, (laughs) Verse 4. And when they came, and when they come to the marketplace, they do not eat unless they clean themselves. Church like we have church. Come on, come on. 
Why don't y'all act like we act? We are more holier than y'all, not according to the law of God or the word of God. We're more holier than y'all because we're keeping the tradition of the elders. They doing what they, and we doing what they say do, but watch this, y'all doing what they say do, but not doing what God say do. That's why I love our teacher Jesus. This, this is what you're learning from right here. You're learning from Jesus today. And we won't let Jesus teach us. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus say? So keep reading. Watch this. Okay. Let's see how Jesus teaches. He replied, rightly. Oh, so right there. Jesus replied, and we'll make sure you know who he is. Jesus replied, and keep reading. Watch this. Rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you. Stop right there. Watch this. Let me show you what Jesus did. Ain't it amazing that you can be in a church full of hypocrites and don't even know it? But Jesus called them jokers out. What did he say?
Because like I said, even today, this side has deviated so far away from what we can talk about. But uh, I, I really want us, every believer, not just this house, man, I pray that my passion becomes your passion to where we live in a place of application. Amen. That even if you sow a seed, and you tithe, and you give, let me show you one quick thing. I got that little scripture already. Six ways the enemy used against you. You can't trust God. You have to do things yourself. That's a big issue that we have. Trying to do, trying to do things on your own. Number two, you can be passive about sin because it's not that big of a deal. See, that's that's that religious mindset. Because there are some sin you may fall into that you can't get out of. Amen. And one thing the devil does is he uses sin. Here's the reality about sin. One of the things he uses sin for is to kill your character. Because if he can kill your character, then guess what? It's going to be hard for you to flow with the anointing of God. Because people ain't going to see you up here preaching. They're going to say, ain't that that joker? Uh, I heard you on Facebook. I saw you. Uh, I saw you up there at Lee's. Or I saw you up there. What's that club up there in uh, Birmingham? You used to do the one back in the day. Uh, see, I didn't even add. I didn't, y'all already know it, but y'all got to leave the hall popping up. Yeah, 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 y'all got to leave. <laughs> change is too hard, so just stay the same. Don't change. Don't change. <laughs> Ooh, I, I took some of y'all back. Come on, come back. Come back. <laughs> some, of y'all, some of y'all. <laughs> come back. Come back. <laughs> Amen. But when we say change is too hard, so just stay the same. But, but I want to get to one. Yeah, that's the one. You have to earn grace. Say grace is given to me. But see, again, you gotta have faith to get grace. In other words, you gotta receive what God has done for you. Notice when Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, and they realized they were naked. What did they go to get to cover themselves? Leaves, right? And they put the leaves on. But then when God called them and said, Adam, where are that and so on and so forth, and after he did all the things he did, the Bible said and he put animal skin on them. Right. Why? Because when you try to do things yourselves, you can only cover your nakedness with temporary things. Because the leaves were going to fade away. Amen. See, watch this. Your alcohol is only going to cover you for so long. Amen. Whatever addiction you struggle with is going to cover you for so long, it's going to fade away. But watch what Jesus did. He killed an animal to cover them. Say grace. Grace. So in order for them to be covered with something that won't fade, something had to die. Amen. So watch this. Grace is the animal skin. Let's put it up before the floor. Grace is the robe of Christ, the righteousness that came from the cross of Calvary to cover you, and it's freely given. You can't earn it. Say, I already got it. But here's the problem. Do you believe it? Do you believe that you got grace? Do you believe that you got victory? You don't need to tithe. Ooh, can't talk about that right now. I'm talking too much. And your past defines you. These are six ways that the enemy uses to weigh us down. I'm going to teach on each last one of these. You don't need to tithe. You don't need to, you don't need to put that in the ground. How do I know? Watch this. How do I know when I'm being led by the flesh? How do I know? Peace. How do I know when being led by the flesh? When your flesh begins to make excuses for your soul not to grow. And here's one big excuse that your flesh loves to use. Well, the Lord know my heart. Wow. Lord, the Lord know. He know. He know me. They ain't gonna say your name. I'm gonna say your name. Stand up, Cece. <laughs> well, I love about this young lady is, man. I gave her a vision. Her and her, 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 her husband here I gave them a vision. They came and sat in my office and talked, shared some stuff. And they got some stuff and some equipment and things like that. And all of a sudden they said, and before they even thought about that, ah, praise God, y'all see the little light back there, the blessed yeah. thing? She did that. Yeah. Amen. Watch this, watch this, watch this. That's a tie. Amen. Amen. That's the first of her business, and the first thing she used was to get to the church. 
That's a tie. This is a tie. He's sowing his talents. Tie. Then, then she said, Bishop, man, we want to we wanna take care of sin. And that's what I love about people. I thank God for them. I think about everyone here. Because everyone pushes us to see this. Because, see, I see the vision, but, man, I love when people get a heart for the ministry. And say, I see this. And I, I see this. And I want to go here. I want to go there. And, and she was going to say, listen, I think we can take this thing a little further. And, I can, and, and I'm like, I, 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 I see it, but I, get, I, I got it. And all of a sudden, in one week, this woman of God made an app for the church. Yeah. Yeah. Together they came first, and we want to do this, and I see this, and I see this, and I'm like, man, I don't know how. And, and, and let me show you how my religious mind works. Now, put me on my own glass because I'll say, well, man, I don't see how I can do that. But see, when it's God, it's not you. He'll bring other folk that can make that thing happen. But that's a tie. That's a tie. When the bills them coming here in the morning, y'all even see them and they win. And he was there up here. I don't know what time he get up here, but he up here. We're going in and everybody cleaning and making sure the church is together and sanitizing. And that's a tie. That's a seed. When others come up here to make sure the music and everything is together, that's a seed. That's a tie. Also, it is a tithe. That's why tithing financially is a faith move. Because it's hard to tithe when you watch this. It's hard to tithe financially when you ain't got faith in the God of Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Amen. That's why it takes faith to tithe. It takes faith to tithe. Woo, to sow that seed when you ain't got it. It takes faith. Amen. See, folks ask me and my wife, how do y'all get what y'all got? How did y'all? See, you, let me go ahead and testify. You yeah. weren't with us when we gave cars away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You weren't with us when we sold for nothing. And we gave one car away that almost put me in jail. That's right. And I almost said I'd never do it again. Because they hurt me. They took advantage of me. And I said, I ain't gonna get, I ain't doing nothing else again. I ain't gonna get nothing else, no, no, but now be dog, no, 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 our refrigerator was overflowing, and people didn't even know we needed it. Because we didn't go to church like night we needed. We went to church, everything was fine, everything we didn't cry about, we did none of that. No one knew that we were struggling. We the power couple. Everybody looking up to us, up in Anderson. Oh, they got it together. You don't even realize we didn't even got bread and cheese to put together in our, in our refrigerator. But I'm on the keyboard playing for my man of God. She's serving. We work. And all of a sudden, we hear a man of God prophesy and speak to sow a seed. And the last hundred dollars we got, the last hundred dollars we got, we sold it. By faith. By faith. By faith. My God. I said, Lord, I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know where. But I believe you heard me. I believe you. Because watch this, you cannot shout over a harvest when you have put seeds in the ground. And when we got blessed with this church, and the man of God said, we're going to leave everything in it. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You weren't there when my man of God made me the youth pastor as a college student at Jacksonville State University. Barely got two nickels to rub together. But he said, I'm going to give you this hole downstairs. And you can do with it as you please. You weren't there. And I went to go work to go get paint. Not for my house, not for my room, but to go paint my, go paint the downstairs youth ministry. And nobody knew it was coming out of our pocket. You didn't see that. So when this church came, yeah, yeah, yeah. our man of God had to remind us. Yeah. You just reaping 
what you sow. Because folk, you don't know our story. And I put, I know I put well over two, three, four, four thousand dollars worth of stuff into that downstairs youth ministry in our church. And no one knew know about it. My wife would tell you when we were dating, I would spend hours on top of hours painting down there. Just like this youth room back here. Just like it. Why am I telling you this? Because if you want something to reap, you gotta have something to sow. It ain't always gonna be money. It ain't always gonna be that. But you'll reap what you sow. By faith. Amen? Put your hands together. Don't fall for the weights of the enemy. Let go of the unnecessary things. Say with me this Lord, from this day forward, I will trust you with my whole heart, with my whole soul, and with my whole mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you believe that, if you believe that, I want you to give God the greatest shout, the greatest praise, the greatest Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now, on social media, you go ahead and bless him right now. Wherever you're at, come on. Oh man, that's sweet. Come on. Come on. Woo! Come on, stop with the watch it. Let me show you something. You in the first Sunday of the rest of the year. Go ahead and sow a seed of praise right here. So reap for the rest of your year. Her labor. That girl worked. 
And that youth ministry, and I thank God when we have some dynamic youth ministry yeah. from working school. Yeah. Yeah. And doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But as she came in, when she was with us on the day one, at Pelham High School, we didn't have no, in that big old auditorium, ain't nobody in there. That girl was there, them two little babies. But she served and sold that she has reaped a legacy that will not be forgotten. That will not be forgotten. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. And so I, I didn't even know. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. I, 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 I was trying to remember, but that's a blessing. But see, when you sow, when you sow your labor, old song, he says, you got to know that your labor is not in vain. You got to know. So I pray to God that if God were to call us home now, the question I want you to ask yourself, what legacy will I leave behind that will push and challenge others to keep on going? Amen. Praise God. Come on up, woman of God. Give God another hand of praise. Amen. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Come on. Come on, Lord. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord God. Real quick, real quick, our announcement. Hallelujah. Our uh, uh, the meeting that was scheduled for today will be rescheduled for next Sunday at 4.30 p.m. until 6 p.m., amen. But we will start our meetings back as normal this week, hallelujah. On Tuesday night tonight uh, we'll, is our Bible study night, which is our Truth Tuesday, and please tune in at 7 p.m., amen. On the first and third Wednesday is our um, Ministers and Prophets training, hallelujah, and it's at 7 p.m., Amen. So there will be a meeting this Wednesday because this is the first Wednesday of the year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, the other thing I wanted to just, what Bishop was just talking about sowing and everything. I just want you to know that you know, if you're able to sow, you can sow via Cash App, Life Changing CC, uh, the money sign, Life Changing CC, or you can go to our website, www. Uh, lifechangingcc.com. Amen. Amen. And well, well, before I end, I want to just minister. Uh, I'm calling you Minister Joe, uh, Joe Bear. Brother um, Terry. Terry. Brother Terry started off, off this morning yeah. with God is here. Yeah. And God is in this atmosphere. But I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters that are on Facebook and Periscope, that God is there. Yeah right where you are. And before we end on this first Sunday of the year, I want to offer Christ to whomever may not know him as the partner of your sin. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God is right there. And right where you are, right here they have been in the house, I want everybody just to lift your hands, close your eyes, bow your floor. Hallelujah. Oh, and just invite Christ into your heart right now. Hallelujah. He's right there. Woo! He's right there. I promise you, if you just take a second, you can feel him. Oh. Just take a second, you can feel him. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to see today, the first Sunday of 2021. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for 2020. Hallelujah. Because if 2020 did not happen, we would not be able to see 2021. Thank you, Lord God. So, Father, right now, Lord God, hallelujah. If you do not know Christ as the one of your sin, I ask of you, I invite you to repeat this after me. Say, Lord God, hallelujah. I accept you in my heart. I receive you in my heart today, hallelujah, to go with me every day of this year, Lord God, for the rest of my life. Father God, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart today, Lord God, and be my God. Hallelujah. Just that simple, my brothers and sisters. If 
people who prayed that very simple prayer. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You are a kingdom citizen of Yahweh. Hallelujah. You are saved right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God for you as you have to Jesus Christ.